Hi, I'm Mark, and today on Outside Views, I want to talk about renewable energies in Britain's politics. When it comes to installing electric heaters, the island state is lagging behind the rest of Europe. The government in London now wants to, yeah, to get manufacturers to change course, and they want to do that with a quota. The debate and many of the problems with the heat transition on the island are quite similar to those here in Germany, at least with the discussion. But the figures are clear. More than four in five UK households that have switched to a heat pump are satisfied with their new heating system. The high level of approval also applies to owners of older buildings from the Victorian period, that's the second half of the 19th century, and even older buildings. 83% are comfortable with the heat pump, and this is even slightly above the average for all residential buildings at 81%, according to a survey by the Nesta think tank. It's time we change the outdated belief that older homes are not suitable for heat pumps. That was said by Madeleine Greg Gabriel, Nesta's sustainability director. The high level of satisfaction is extremely encouraging in their point of view. But with 2,500 households surveyed, the sample remains relatively small. And this is not surprising, as Great Britain is considered an absolute laggard in Europe when it comes to installing this kind of heating system. 43,000 heat pumps were sold in 2021 based on the number of inhabitants. According to data from the European Heat Pump Association, the island brings up the rear of 21 European countries behind Germany in 19th place. At the same time, one and a half million new gas boilers were installed in this same year. And there's no sign of a trend reversal. On the contrary, almost 8,800 of the pumps were installed in the first three months of the year. In order to achieve its annual target of 600,000 installations from 2028, the government must therefore do more. And compared to the specifications planned here in Germany, Great Britain is taking more time to decarbonize heating. Gas boilers, which to date account for almost 80% of heating systems in residential buildings, may no longer be installed from 2035 and a new building's installation is prohibited 10 years earlier from 2025. As an additional incentive, the government is considering introducing mandatory quotas for manufacturers starting next year. Anyone who does not meet the specified proportion of heat pumps would then be fined. The British market for gas boilers is dominated by large European manufacturers such as Weiland and Baxi, who also offer heat pumps. The producers are now up in arms against the plans, though. If we have to face penalties, we will review our investment plans in the UK. That was said by Henrik Hansen, Managing Director of German Heating and Cooling System Specialist Weiland for Great Britain and Ireland, and he told this to the Financial Times. Weiland invested around £4 million in a new heat pump production facility in Derbyshire last year. And on the other hand, supporters of the system are convinced that only financial and regulatory pressure will help to boost the market and thus also depress prices for heat pumps in the country. Because a significant reduction in carbon dioxide emissions from private heating is an important contribution to the statutory goal of reducing the country's emissions to net zero by 2050. Almost 15% is accounted for by this area today. And a key contributor to the problem is the UK building stock, believed to be the oldest and least well insulated in Europe. A large part of the typical row house settlements, which still characterize the city shape throughout the country today, were initially kept warm with coal stoves. When the supply switched to town gas, a good seal was considered downright dangerous given the problems of the carbon monoxide and hydrogen mixture. To compensate for the poor insulation, the boilers have been set to run hot quickly. Heat pumps, on the other hand, work particularly efficiently in well-insulated buildings. Depending on the system, they need a hot water tank to store the heat, which many buildings just don't have. And there is no doubt that installing heat pumps in the UK is challenging. That was admitted by Andrew Sissons, Nesta economist. 
For the energy efficiency of a house, however, not only the insulation is important. In the case of decarbonization, this only accounts for a smaller proportion. Rather, it interacts with the heating system and, of course, its correct use. Denmark and Italy also do not have the perfect conditions for installing heat pumps in existing homes. But operating costs are a major factor in slow paving progress. A heat pump is up to three times more efficient in generating heat, but since the gas price in Britain was significantly cheaper than electricity, this does not affect the bills. And this is partly due to the tax system there. Taxes intended to encourage the switch to renewable energy are added to the price of electricity in the country. But the price of gas is exempt and you need electricity for a heat pump. According to research by the Institute for Fiscal Studies using gas results in an implicit carbon allowance. A change is now being considered and this could drive up the gas price relative to electricity costs and thus, in this case, shift the incentives. But the installation cost for a heat pump are also regularly mentioned as a hurdle. Depending on the methodology and equipment, they will tell you they cost between 7,000 and 13,000 pounds and gas boilers cost three to 5,000. Government grants of around 5,000 are supposed to close the gap, but the application process is considered complicated. And on the price on the heat pump, there comes much more like PV on the roof and everything. In addition, two thirds of the population still have no idea about heat pumps, how they work and who provides them and what else you need to run them in your home. And that is something people must not forget when they get information. Accordingly, it's difficult to get an overview of the offers and the market. And meanwhile, with Octopus Energy and British Gas, first suppliers are offering heat pumps between 2,000 and 3,000 pounds, subject to applying for the government subsidy. But rapid insulation then often fails due to lack of personnel. We know the Brexit staff shortage there. And according to Nesta, around 3,000 installers in the country now meet the requirements for installing a heat pump. But to meet the government's ambitions, the number would need to be 10 times that by the end of the decade. After all, interest is growing and according to the Octopus Energy Company, there are already 50,000 people on a waiting list for a heat pump to be installed. And changes in funding could accelerate that. But some banks are now also offering better mortgage terms if homeowners are willing to improve energy efficiency. That at least was said by Philip Dunn, Conservative MP and Chair of the Lower House's Environmental Review Committee. The institutes would have an interest in making their own balance sheet more environmentally friendly and that could be another impetus in his mind. And also... Because if someone thought that nobody could fritter away an energy transition like Germany, then you really should take a look at Great Britain. The local grid operator National Grid calculated there that the country would have to invest massively also in wind farms on the mainland, that's what you usually know as onshore, by 2030. The installed capacity must be increased to 30 gigawatts. According to a study by the Institute for Public Policy Research, or IPPR, the country is a long way from achieving the necessary speed in the construction of wind turbines. And I mean very, very, very far away. A total of just 15 smaller onshore wind farms have been approved in the UK since 2015. And the authors calculate that these only generate 0.02% of the amount of electricity that national grid estimates will be needed in 2030. If the expansion of wind power continues at this snail's pace in the future, it would take England 4,700 years to reach the onshore wind power capacity, according to the Institute. And currently, the country is practically as far away from providing the necessary wind power capacities as when construction of Stonehenge began in 2500 BC. And that is quite a distance. The reason for the extremely sluggish expansion is apparently the extremely restrictive planning system in Great Britain. The IPPR even speaks of a de facto ban on wind turbines on the mainland. And to put this into perspective, the newly installed capacity in Great Britain since 2015 is 6.7 megawatts. In Germany, on the other hand, new plants with an output of 2400 megawatts 
were built in 2022 alone. But British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak promised six months ago that the problems would be tackled, but so far without success. And if you want to know more about British politics, the next video is right here on the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.